Hello, hello, hello. My name is Patricia. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the United States and most specifically in Alaska. And today we are going to do the last in our series with the Daisy Garden. Daisy Garden stamp set. If you look in the current annual catalog, May 2021 to April 2022, on page, I believe it's 106, yes, 106, Daisy Garden, uh, item number 155079, there you go. I think this is kind of one of those hidden gems, and I have done a series here on uh, these six cards that you can see in front of you now. At least I hope you can see them. Looks pretty good. Um, these six cards, we have already done all of them except this one. So if you did not catch those, you can look back in the previous videos in this series and you will uh, be able to see how to create those. Sorry, just moving things around a little bit on my desktop. And um, today we are going to do this. Well, hello, everything is moving on me. <laughs> uh, this card and this card is a little more complicated than some of the other cards that we have done, but truly not all that much. And the complicated thing about this card, if you want to call it complicated, is all the fussy cutting. Fussy cutting for some people is never, ever, ever going to do. But for a lot of people, they really like doing fussy cutting. It's one of those things that you can easily do while you're sitting in front of the TV. If you're a TV kind of person, <laughs> I'm not really. I don't have time for it. But, um, you know, watching a YouTube video or whatever it is that you do to sit and relax. Um, I like to listen to books on tape, and books on tape are a great opportunity not only to do the dishes, but to fussy cut. So this is the card that we are going to do today. Doing this one, we need a half a sheet of polished pink. So that is four and a quarter by five and a half, or eight and a half by four, five and a half. I do know my measurement. So eight and a half by five and a half. And we are going to, or a half a sheet of paper, we are going to fold this in half and score. Now you could, um, and not score, burnish, uh, you could use this on your uh, paper trimmer and score it and then just fold it and burnish it that way. I find that it works just a little bit better for me if I fold it in half and then burnish it. So whatever works for you. All right, then the next thing we need is a piece of basic white and this is one and a half by four and a quarter. So it is going to fill the entire space here. Then we need our stamp sets. So our stamp set, the first one, is the Daisy Garden. And I have that on my Stamparatus. And we're going to use that here in just a moment. And actually, I need to keep this out because I'm going to put it under this as I am using my Stamparatus. And then the sentiment that we used on this is from Plentiful Plants. And it's a little note with the biggest thanks. Okay, the sentiment is entirely up to you. You just want it to complement the card, for one, but fill this space. Or it doesn't even have to fill the space. It just needs to be in that space. Another one that I have found that I love lately is this one, Biggest Wishes. There's thanks, birthday, happy, hello, friend, birthday, happy, hello, thanks, and friend. All the same words in the scripty type and in the box type, which is so cool because what you do is you stamp birthday and then in the box type, and then you take happy and stamp it on top of that. So cool. Or um, happy birthday, you know, whichever one works for you. Or thanks and thanks. You could use those together. Hello, friend. Or hello, 
friend. You know, however it works for you. I love, love, love this one. Maybe I'll do a video on that particular stamp set. But the one we're going to use today, <laughs> there are dies in here and it just was connect, uh, connecting to my magnets. But anyway, we're going to use a little note with biggest thanks. The other sentiments here, you were there and I'm very grateful. Thank you. Love that scripty type. To a dear friend, love you. You touched my heart and so very much. So it could be you touched my heart so very much or thank you so very much. Um, love you so very much, whatever works for you. Okay, so we're going to do this set. Whoops, what did I do with my card? I put it down here. All right, and then, of course, uh, as far as talking about what items we're going to need, we're also going to need some scrap paper, and I'll show you what I did here, is I just stamped this stamp set on some basic white cardstock, on some uh, pear pizzazz in pear pizzazz, some white or pear pizzazz on basic white, and then uh, we've also got the um, uh, what is this? The pale pipe papaya and daffodil delight and. Um, polished pink, which we're using now, and as I said, the, um, actually I think I use this one is Evening Evergreen on the Pear Pizzazz, but these are what I cut out all the flowers, my fussy cutting is what we call it, to go on here, and I'll show you that in just a moment. All right, so what we're going to do is we've got our stamp set, it's the one stamp, and we are going to stamp this. Now, here's something if it's been a while. So it's been a couple of days since I put this stamp set in here. I'm going to place the card on the stamp. It's clean. There's nothing on there. No ink, in other words. I'm going to place it on there. And then I'm going to roll the base of the Stamparatus over and take it this way. And the reason I turn the whole thing over, the reason I do that is so that I know about where my stamp set, or uh, not stamp set, my card base needs to go in the Stamparatus with the way that I have the stamp set set up on there. Okay, I did move it a little bit. And I'm just checking it. I'm actually going to move it over just a smidgen bit. You know, smidgen bit. We've talked about that before. Okay, so I've got it where I want it, and I'm going to go ahead and use my magnets. This is a whole card base. It's not a single piece of um, cardstock. So I do want to use those magnets to make sure that my card stays where I need it, just in case I need to stamp again. I can move that a little bit further on. There we go. Everything looks pretty good. All right, perfect. So I do that while I still have no ink on it. All right, once I'm satisfied with where it is, again, this is polished pink. I'm going to take my polished pink ink and ink up my stamp set. And so, um, again, I put the, the case underneath of it so that it's got something to rest against because if that's not under there then I'm kind of doing this it's it's not sturdy enough without me holding it so there we go we're going to stamp it up ink it up I always say that okay once I've got it good and inked then I'm going to roll it over I'm going to give it a good press make sure everything gets well inked and then gently lift it. Ah, uh, I'd like it a little bit darker. So that's the beauty of the Stamparatus. I can ink it up again. So I'm going to ink it up real good and press again. Give it a good press and I'm just take, making a fist and rolling it on here. Okay. Oh yeah, looks much better. Oh, a little bit in the middle. Let's give it a good press there in the middle. How's that? Oh yeah, look at that. 
perfect. Love it. All right. If I were to have problems down here at the bottom, it doesn't matter because um, I'm going to cover that bottom up. But I am going to clean my ink, uh, clean my, ink, clean my uh, stamp with my chamois before I close it just to, you know, keep things clean as I go. Makes it a little bit nicer to work with everything. Close that then, put my chamois back in. It's just a case, just the same kind of case that your stamps come in. Okay, there we go. Let's get all of this out of the way. Close up our ink pad. Don't want to get ink all over everything. Okay, so here is this. Now I'm going to make my sentiment. And as I said, my sentiment came from, oh, here it is, uh, the plentiful plants. So I'm going to pull out this sentiment. What did it? <laughs> It went with the card, and I'm going to pull out a block, and I just lay it down on my desktop and pick it up with the block, okay? Here's another thing. If you put it, put it down straight, but pick it up at an angle, then you pay attention. You're more likely to pay attention to the stamp set and not the edge of the block when you go to line it up. Okay, so here's my piece. I'm going to stamp my sentiment in Evening Evergreen. So I'm going to open that up. Stamp, stamp, stamp. Or tap, tap, tap. And what I'm going to do is I want to go a little bit down. Okay, I don't want to go up high and I don't want to go in the middle because I'm going to have flowers there. Tap, tap, tap and align it and give it a good press perfect i love it okay remember if you mess up guess what paper has two sides i know stampin up is about to come up with paper that has three sides can you believe okay i'm a joking but <laughs> um we have two sides to every piece of cardstock. And so unless you've already stamped on the other side, if you mess up on this one, just turn it over and do it again. All right. So then I am going to put this on the very bottom. I do want to match it up pretty much exact. So it's going to go right there. And I'm going to take whatever your preferred method of um, adhesive, whether that's uh, the tape, I mean the uh, uh, stamp and seal is tape um, or whether you want to use the multi-purpose Tombow okay line that up the reason I like Tombow for this particular kind of thing is it does give me a little bit of wiggle room you saw how I didn't have it exactly lined up just perfect and that's okay all right I have a bunch of of pieces already cut out. You'll notice that on many of these I left the tails on them. I can cut those off if I decide that I don't need them. But remember I stamped them <coughs> excuse me I stamped them mostly on basic white but I did stamp on um, pear pizzazz with the evening evergreen okay so then i've cut these all out i'm going to show you a couple of little hints about cutting these out notice there are some extra lines on this that's no big deal i'm going to hold it in my non cutting hand and with my cutting hand in this case i'm right-handed so i'm going to use this and i'm going to cut well hello and then move it with my non-cutting hand so you see how i roll it as i come to each little turn and i'm leaving a little bit of space i'm not really fretting about you know if it's perfectly 
a, an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch or whatever it is that you might leave on the outside. I am not, however, cutting on the line. I want to leave a little bit of space there, just like when we're using our dies, how there's a little bit of space there. Okay. The other thing you can do, if you choose, is either to give it a little bit of curl, like that, or if you've got little bumps up, I don't know if you can see this, but, well, hello. See how there's a little bit of a bump there from cutting it? And you can just straighten that out using your bone folder, and it smooths those edges out. Or you can give it a little bit of curl if you want the um, a little bit of oomph to your project. So then what I want to do is lay things out on here. I do want to give it a little bit of curl maybe. Okay, like that. And then lay things out. Again, I may cut this tail off. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going to kind of lay things out on here. You know, just kind of laying them around. Um, another thing that's kind of sometimes easy or makes it a little easier is to decide which one is your focal point. So it might be that one. And I'm just going to kind of hmm, something like this. There we go. This particular piece I cut as two separate pieces. And I have a little bit here I might want to cut a little more. Like that. Okay, and then I can layer this piece on here like this because the whole thing wouldn't be yellow. It's got some green there at the bottom. So what I'm going to do, okay, another thing I want to show you is I am going to use my silicone mat and I am going to put a little bit of glue on here from my uh, Tombow Multipurpose. And I've got a sponge, um, basically anything. You could even use a, uh, what do you call these things? Whatever those things are called. <laughs> um, but get you some glue on there. And then I am just going to put some on the back of whatever it is that I am trying to glue on. And then, in this case, layer it up. So I'm just going to match it and layer it. And that stem sort of helps me be able to line it up as well. Okay, so like that. And then, you know, I might put it right here. That works. A little bit of, of uh, whoops, move things around. Now, if you want, if you feel like you're going to forget where things were supposed to be, if there's a, a supposed to to it, uh, you could always take a picture with your phone, whatever floats your boater. I think I'll put this one here and move this one up here somewhere. And I've got another one. Where do I want this one? Uh, maybe we'll cluster it with that one. Okay, something like that. So it looks like I do not want this stem, so I am going to snip it off. But at least if I have it, then when I start putting things together, I can just get rid of it. Okay. There we go. If it needs a little more trimming, you know, whatever works for you. All right. So then I'm going to take these off, lay them over here aside, just so that I can see them. Whoops, I don't want to get that in my glue. Okay. And then... Cut off some of this. Don't need the whole thing. And put some glue on there. Okay. Put that somewhere about like that. This one. Going to get me some glue to put on there. Put that on there. Okay. And let's see. Let's take everything off. So I sort of know what I'm going to put on now. Put some glue on there. If I run out, I can always get more, which I definitely need to do. 
oops, <laughs> put glue on the correct side, Patricia. Now, you notice what I did right there? I just went straight down into the glue and then dabbed on here so I got too much. What's better is to sort of pull a little bit out like that. All right, so it was somewhere around in here. Yeah, that looks good. All right, and we wanted one of these. Let's get a little bit of glue on there. Uh, where was it going to be? Somewhere about there. That works for me. Okay, a little bit. Mm, let's see. Let's put some of these flowers on. Now, I also occasionally like to really use my, um, I have a pair of tweezers I use. I didn't bring it over here, but sometimes just to prevent getting all that glue all over me, it's nice to have a pair of tweezers. So these two, again, something like this. So that there. I don't want to glue it down too much yet because I still have to get these leaves in there. And I don't want to cover my flowers. So I think something on that order. Where are my darker green flowers? I mean leaves. Mm -hmm. Oh, one of them's over here. If I can pick it up. There we go. A little bit of glue on there. And let's see where these flowers go again. Something on this order. I mm. think I'll put that one there. Not exactly where I had originally placed it, but you know what? It doesn't really matter. All right, I think this one, even though the stem is going the wrong direction, I sort of want them something like this. Oh yeah, okay. But what I am going to do is put a little bit of dimensional on this one at any rate and cut a little bit more. This is the end of this particular set of dimensionals. It's always get fun to get to the end of a, a uh, set. Now, part of the reason that a page, I mean, of dimensionals. Part of the reason I wanted to put that on the dimensional is because then I want to be able to put that stem up in there, and I think that will work. So, I think I'll just slip that dimensional under there. Eh, we'll pull it out. I got it in easy enough, right? No, uh, I'm going to cut that one in half. Okay. And there we go. Okay, and slip that in, right like that. <gasps> Very nice. Doesn't that look great? I just love it. Okay, so here's our original. Similar. Not the same, but similar. Looks nice. Okay, oh, you know what? The mistake I made, I covered up my sentiment here just a smidge. So let's move this flower up just a little bit. There we go. I was able to pull that uh, dimensional up and not cover my sentiment. There we go. How easy is that? Now, I have, since I made this set, done another one with this particular stamp set. And look at this one. This is the one that I was talking about in the beginning about using the Biggest Wishes. Stamped happy and what I did with it is stamp it in the night or the misty moonlight this is all misty moonlight stamped uh, my stamp in misty moonlight stamped off and then stamped on my sentiment card and then misty moonlight for birthday full strength I didn't stamp off with that one but you could do this in any color literally any color this the ink 
is the same as the background piece here and as long as you do that it's all going to match there's just a little piece of vellum here you could even do even if you had just two little bitty pieces of vellum little tiny pieces um, so good way to use up vellum this particular one i believe is oh i don't know it's like maybe three inches by two and a half or something like that doesn't really matter it's just a little piece of vellum behind that another idea for how to use this particular stamp set love it love it love it all right i hope you have enjoyed working on this card with me i hope you will make it i would love it if you would share any of the cards that we have done in this particular series there's this one with the evergreen background there's this one whoops just that one because <laughs> i already used the happy birthday uh, these two, again, same, um, just using different colors, okay? The exact same set, the exact same pattern, if you will, um, but different cards. This one, again, happy birthday and thank you, and thanks and thanks. So, I hope you enjoyed these. If you will share your cards, I would love to see that, particularly if you would like to share them on my Facebook page. It's Stampin' with Patricia, no spaces. Uh, my uh, blog, Stampin' with Patricia dot blog spot, Stampin' with Patricia blog dot blog spot. <laughs> blogspot.com stampin with patricia.stampinup.net is where you can buy any of the supplies the supplies will be listed below and the host code until about July 15th is z x u c r u 4 d thank you so much if you would give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share uh click the uh, subscribe button below if it is red and ring the bell that is beside that so you can get notifications when I publish new videos. Thank you so much. Have a great week. Enjoy your stamping and take care. We'll see you next time.